Marina Skewer podcast. My name's Marina and I'm recording in Bath, a city in the southwest UK. I'm a knitter, dyer, spinner and tech editor of Knitting Patterns and this is a podcast about those things. Um, in today's episode I'm going to be talking about a few exciting things. Um, I've got a couple of new designs that I'm going to give you a little sneaky preview of. Um, and I've got a new yarn base, which I'm going to tell you a bit about. Um, it's going to be launching at Yarnporium uh, next weekend. Um, and I'm also going to show you how I do colour work, um, stranded colour work, using a variation on a Norwegian thimble. I'm not going to do a separate uh, section for works in progress in this episode of the podcast because I'm going to be focusing on one of them where I show you how I do stranded colour work. And the other one is the Mendit Mitts, which you will be familiar with by now if you have been watching the podcast. Um, I haven't made an enormous amount of progress. I think I've done about that much since last time. And... They're going quite slowly, um, but I am enjoying them. I've just got, well, I've, I'll have i show you in a bit the other things I've been working on that have made those go less quickly than I'd like. Um, so those are part of the Mendip Knit Along, um, which is going on until the beginning of December. So you're welcome to join in and knit any project using Mendip Yarn for a chance to win a couple of prizes. Um, and yeah, that's that's it on what I'm knitting at the moment. I do want to knit so many more things. I have fewer things currently on the needles than I usually do, which is a bit of a relief um, because I've been crazy busy. Uh, I'm dyeing up loads and loads of yarn, some of which you'll see in a bit, um, and doing lots and lots of tech editing, which is uh, really good, but really not fun to show you because you know, I can't show you patterns that haven't been released yet. And, you know, it's mostly spreadsheets. It's um, it's not very exciting to look at, but it is good work. Um, and, yeah, do most people know what tech editing is? I've talked a bit about it um, previously on Instagram and in a couple of blog posts, but it's one of those quite behind the scenes things um, where, you know, it, when new patterns come out, people don't necessarily notice or care about who tech edited it, but um, it is quite an important part of publishing knitting patterns, so I do that as well. Um, and yeah, but it, I, all of those things are preventing me from doing as much knitting as I'd like, um, which I can't really complain about because, you know, I'm still getting loads of knitting time. I just have hundreds of things I'd like to make. I want to make a few cardigans. I want to make, you know, so many scarves. I want to make all the jumpers in the world um, in every style, you know, gigantic cabled things, awesome ribbed raglan things with a big turtleneck collar, um, loads and loads of colour work, like Norwegian style ones, Icelandic style ones, crazy ones that I come up with myself. I bloody love jumpers and yeah. Oh, I haven't actually mentioned this one. Uh, you can't really see that one. Let's see. Um, yeah, I love this one. Um, this is one that I knit, I finished it at the beginning of this year. Um, it was a test knit for Making Stories Breeze. Um, it's designed by Emily Green, who is the other Emily on Instagram. Um, she, I, I have so much respect for her work. She just does gorgeous things with diagonal lines and and structural elements and oh, I love them. Um, yes, yeah, so the pattern was published in Making Stories Breeze, um, which is a lovely publication. They, uh, they've got a new book coming out uh, now-ish uh, called Jewels, which I'm hoping to see, which will be really exciting. Um, Yes, and the yarn for this one is Cambrian wool, Cambrian wool, Cambrian wool. I always get those mixed up. Um, stupid Cambridge, confusing everything. 
Cambrian wool, um, which is wool from Wales. Um, it's a DK weight, um, but this was actually, I ended up knitting it on 3.25 millimeter needles, which for quite an oversized jumper was a beast of a project, but I love it. It's just really, really comfy. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'd love to do a cardigan version, like just splitting down here and, and yeah, just overlapping it. Um, I might make the neckline a tiny bit narrower because it, um, it is a bit wide on me. Like it's, it's fine, like that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, but I do have quite narrow shoulders, so often it feels a bit like it's falling off. Um, but yeah, that turned into a bit of a ramble. Um, but yeah, I just get very excited about knitting. I want to knit all the things and I don't have the time. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy today's episode. Since the last time we spoke, or the last time I recorded, I have finished three knitted things. Um, one is the sleeveless pullover I was doing in grey and white alpaca yarn. I can't show you that one because it's already gone to the person it's for. However, I do have two super exciting things. Both of them are things I've designed and they are currently in test knitting and will be released over the next couple of weeks and I thought I'd give you a sneaky look at them. So the first one is one that was sitting in the naughty corner for ages. Um, if I show you here, it's a cowl. So it's got this awesome detail on it. Um, those who know my style probably know that I really like strong diagonal lines and like sort of geometric um, design features and like lots of texture. I'm not a big fan of lacy stuff. Um, and so I like this because it's, it, it sort of has structure to it and it's, it's in ribbing and it's in a super bouncy um, yarn. It's actually a DK weight, but I'd, I'd have it more down as an Aran weight. It's um, something like 110 meters per 50 gram ball. It's um, Blacker Yarns um, Shetland DK. Uh, which is lovely. So this is the natural colour. Um, this one's called Moret, which is actually the colour of this colour of sheep um, in the Shetland breed. Uh, if I show you what it looks like on. So you can, when it's super chilly, you can wear it up like this. Uh, you have your coat wrapped around you and it's all super snuggly. I've been wearing it with the top tucked in like this. So you just get these nice lines coming around here. Um, and I really like it. It's super comfy and super easy to wear and just great to throw on. Um, so yes, I said it was in the naughty corner because when I was making it, well, I started it last winter because I got this yarn for Christmas um, and it went wrong a few times. Like it's, it's part of the whole designing things thing. Um, and so, I think twice I had to rip it right back to the first section of ribbing and then start again. Um, occasionally partly through just doing the setup wrongly myself and then not realising until it was too late. Um, but then once I got going it was great and um, so it's super exciting. I So I, yes. When I ripped it back a couple of times, I got so annoyed with it. And because it's lots of ribbing, it was one of the things that was hurting my wrist when my wrist was being all bad. Um, and so since switching to Continental, I actually find ribbing a lot easier. Um, and so now it, it just flew off the needles when I picked it up again. Um, and it's just really nice. It's also, I turn it inside out for you it's completely reversible and so you just get like all of the lines traveling in the other direction which I really love um yeah because I, I know that's a thing with sort of cowls and scarves and things that might be seen from both sides it is nice to have them be reversible so you don't have to constantly make sure that it's all not showing the inside bit because you don't, you don't want people to see the wrong side of your knitting, uh, especially if you're a bit messy about it like me. Um, 
So yes, this one's currently out in test knitting and will be releasing, I think, the week after next. It takes sort of two and a half balls of the yarn. Um, so they're 50 gram balls, so it's not that much yarn at all. Um, and it's just a nice snuggly one for winter. Um, so I'm super excited about that. That's called the Tilda Cowl um, because it looks like sort of furrows in a ploughed field. Um, and we're seeing a lot of that this time of year, so I quite like that. Um, and then the second thing I have to show you, because we know I like colour work, is a colour work hat. It is called Aspis. Um, it's called that because when I designed it, these little sort of rounded diamondy shapes to me kind of look like shields. Um, so, you know, well, possibly not, but um, the Romans used to have, when the legions were advancing, they would have a shield wall at the front of the army. And so they'd have lines of these shields. And Aspis was the type of shield. Um, so I quite like that. Uh, oh, now I'm doubting myself. Was Aspis the Greek one or the Roman one? Unsure, shall check. Um, but yes, so this is in Blue Sky Fibres, Woolstock Worsted. Um, it's a gorgeous, like, squishy yarn. Um, it's very similar weight to the Tilled Earth Cowl. Um, again, roughly 110 metres per 50 gram skein. Um, this one I actually got in my, the yarn I got in my fibre share package from my lovely fibre share partner this time. And I basically received it, took it out of the box um got out my little grid paper sketchbook scribbled up a design and pretty much immediately knit this um i finished it in a weekend um it's super nice and quick and easy a uh, few of my test knitters are doing it as their first ever beanie pattern so their first time knitting in the round so it's nice and easy it's got a really nice tubular cast on you can see that so it's really nice and squishy and it just gives that lovely finish on the edge um and it's got instructions for doing that because i it's not that much extra writing to include it and i i prefer to do that than to say like here's a link to look up how to do it um so i can put this on to show you of course the bobble is optional um and so I usually like a slouchy beanie. If I wear it non-slouchy, it comes down quite far on my face. And I'm not, I'm not so keen on that, especially with my hair, it gets a bit in the way. So I like to wear it a bit further back, scruff up my hair a bit, um, sort of like that. You know, it keeps the back of my neck warm too. And yeah, it's just super cozy. Um, I'm doing it in three sizes. So it's, there's a sort of adult, large, and this is a medium size and then the small size is a kind of I'd say teen or large child um so yes this one is also testing and I'm hoping to have it released next week um again like does not require much yarn I didn't quite use a whole skein of the grey and the red I've still got quite a lot left of I think I probably used about 25 grams in total something like that possibly not even that um so yeah really nice one to especially to use up um bits of yarn for the color work and bobble um yeah so i really like that and i hope that people will like it when it's released um my brother already wants one and he's probably not going to get one I have too much knitting on the cards and I wear both of these because a lot of people don't wear their samples and it's a kind of discipline thing and they want to keep their samples all pristine. I don't believe in that um, because, you know, part of a sample should be sort of showing how the yarn wears and how it works in a garment or an accessory or whatever. And so if you never wear it, you'll never really know how the yarn is going to behave. And I, I think that's something that's quite important to be aware of. Um, and also, I, I just really don't like the idea of making something and having it sit there useless 
in a pile until you take it to a show and people look at it and say, oh, how pretty. But the rest of the time it's not worn and it doesn't serve a function because that's not why I make things. Like I, I don't, I don't want to just make things for the sake of it. And then, I mean, it's, it's why I started actually selling things in the first place was that I was endlessly making things because I always want to use my hands. And I was just making way more stuff than I could keep for myself. And I was giving away a lot of things to friends and family, but inevitably people get bored of stuff. Uh, and so I started selling things and that's sort of how that goes. Um, yeah, I just want things to be used and appreciated and enjoyed. And if that's something I can do, then yay. Um, so yes, that's these two. So yeah, both not complicated knits, um, but really nice projects with sort of just enough interest to keep you going. Um, and yeah, you can put them both on. It's not quite warm enough for both of them yet. I've been wearing the cowl, but not so much the hat. Um, even though, well, my ears get colder now that I have short hair. Um, there we go. I like it, it's good. Um, yeah. As those of you who follow me on Instagram might have seen, I have a new yarn coming out that I'm releasing at Yarn Porium, which is the weekend after this one, so the 2nd and 3rd of November. Um, I've been researching the yarn for a few months. Um, it's, oh, do I tell you the story or about it first? I'll tell you about the yarn first. Um, it is an alpaca yarn from a local alpaca farm. Um, I'm doing it in these deep sort of, I guess they'd average out as dual colors. Um, so quite rich and variegated. Um, I've only got three colours to show you now because the other two are still in progress. Um, they're going to be a nice rich grey and a sort of tan orange, like really autumnal colour. Um, and so it is, it's 230 metres to a 50 gram skein. Um, technically, that makes it a four ply. I don't really, well, I really don't like four ply as a classification for yarn. It's not at all helpful because these are, the yarn physically is a two ply. So it's two strands of singles twisted together. So it's a two ply yarn, but it's called four ply because of the weight it is. But four ply as a definition is far too broad to be useful. Like it spans, these days it spans pretty much everything from lace to DK and that's broad and monstrous. It's not actually helpful at all to show people anything about the yarn, but it is a four ply um, on quite the fine end of four ply. Um, so it's quite, um, quite a skinny yarn. Um, it's sort of just above a lace weight. Can you see there? separate out some strands for you so you can see. Um, so yeah, it's got this lovely fuzzy little halo. Oh, that's not going to focus, is it? What if I cap on there? Nah, not really working. Um, but it's got a really nice little halo. It's baby alpaca, um, so it's super soft, um, which I love and it's from alpacas on a small alpaca, well, it's a small holding more than a farm. They're kind of kept as pets, um, so they're really well looked after and everything. Um, and yeah, they're just about 25 miles away from where I live um, because I'm working really hard to try and source things locally because I really like that. I like being able to go and visit the places that supply the fiber I'm using um, to be able to meet the animals, to know the conditions they're kept in and everything, because that's quite important to me. 
Um, while I've been focusing on using British fibre for a while, um, like actually having it sustainable and knowing it's single flock is really nice. Um, yeah, so I'm calling the yarn Kaya, which is C-A-I-A. -A. Um, it's a slightly silly little pun uh, on Wakaya, which is the kind of alpaca it is, um, which is by far the most common breed of alpaca. There are two, there's Wakaya and Suri. Um, Suri, uh, like they have really, really long um, coats, fleeces, um, which make an amazingly long fiber um, and it's very silky. Uh, Wakaya is very warm and soft and they're the ones that look really fluffy. Um, and yes, so it's called Kaya after Wakaya, but also um, Kaya Cecilia, who was the mother of one of the kings of Rome. Um, and she is, well, she's kind of been sort of regarded as a goddess, but she was a real person. Um, and she's heavily associated with womanhood and fire and hearth, but also spinning and weaving and textiles. Um, so she's often pictured with a distaff and spindle, which I really like, and I think it's quite appropriate, and I love a classical reference. So I think I haven't come up with names for the colorways yet, but I think they are going to be named after women from classical myth and literature. Um, so mostly Greek and Roman and sort of Northern Mediterranean because um, that's where most of the stories I know are from. Um, so yes, I, I'll give you a better glimpse at the yarn. Um, I'll film it not with me just holding it up so you can see. Um, I can't wait to show you the two other colours. Um, if you are coming along to Yarn Porium, come and squish it in person because it is beautifully squishy. Like it's both very sort of silky and lustrous, but also like mm, squishy and soft. Um, and as I said, it's got that nice little halo. So um, when it's knit with and washed, it will go quite fluffy, which I'm very excited about. And I actually really want to try knitting it together with Mendip um, because I really like holding multiple strands of yarn together. Um, and I think that would give the most gorgeous fabric because you've got sort of the lustrousness of the alpaca, which gives a really nice drape, but then the sort of springiness and bounciness of Mendip, um, which gives it sort of a bit more structure and things. Um, so I'm, well, hopefully if I have time, I will try and do a couple of little swatches before yarn porium so people can see how those work together as well because I think that'll be really nice. Uh, and any stock that doesn't sell at yarn porium will be listed uh, the following week on the web shop and then I'll be dyeing up more stock um, as soon as I'm able to really. Some of you might remember that last time um, on the last episode I talked about uh, working colour work using a yarn guide, um, so a little thing that keeps the strands of yarn separated on my finger when I'm knitting continental so that the strands of yarn don't migrate towards the middle of my finger and it gets really hard to separate them. Um, and I said that I was going to try out a Norwegian thimble that a friend had lent me. I tried it out and it was way too big for me because as you can see, I've got really skinny fingers. Um, and so I ended up making my own out of jewelry wire and it's really hilariously bad. I don't know if you can see that. 
just like that. And so it just goes on my finger. It's quite bendy because it's not out of strong wire. And it just goes like that and then the two strands of yarn go through there. Um, and it works really well. I posted on Instagram uh, about it and lots of people were really interested in it because I think it's not actually something that a lot of people have come across. And I got a lot of requests to see how it actually works. Um, and so I thought I'd show you. I also, this one's even funnier. I made a three color version. I don't know if you can see that. Look how horrifying that is. So that goes on my finger that way round. It's not great to see. And then it's got a little loop here and then a little loop here for two colors. And then there's like a hooky bit in the middle there for the third color. It looks ridiculous, but it actually works really, really nicely. Um, and so, yeah, I'm gonna do just a little bit showing you with this jumper, which you will recognize from last time if you saw it. Um, I've got to the same stage that I was at before I ran out of yarn, um, but now with white sleeves rather than green sleeves. And so I'm just doing the color work on the sleeves here. And I'll show you how I do it using the like hilariously bosh together Norwegian thimble. Um, so I'm going to show you quickly how I tend to work stranded colour work. Um, so you can see I've got my yoke here. I've got one sleeve here with the yarns coming off it there. Other sleeve here with the yarns come off it, coming off it here. And my needles are here. Um, so the ones I'm about to work, the stitches I'm about to work are here. So I'm going to split them in half there. This is also showing how I work sleeves two at a time in the round because it's, uh, it's a way I much prefer of doing it because it means that you don't feel like you're just redoing the work you did um, twice and because that feels very boring to me. Um, so you can see there, if I hold my yarns just on my finger, even if I separate them, they tend to migrate together as I knit so they'll get closer together and then it ends up being difficult to pick up one colour or the other um, with my needle and it's quite slow and rather dull. Some people I know hold their yarns differently so they wrap them around different fingers or hold one above or, and one below another finger. Um, I've never quite got the hang of that because as I've mentioned before I'm quite a recent continental knitter. Um, and so I just have this on my finger. Um, I'm using the green here as the dominant color. So I will wrap that around the little loop that's effectively on the left, so it's closer to my body. And then I'll get the white and wrap that around the other loop. So you can see how I've got those wrapped there. Let's try and get the color to focus. Um, and then I'll just hold them so that they've got nice tension on them. And you can see it just holds the yarns apart from each other. And so that it's, oh, I had to rework one of, oh no. Um, it holds the yarns apart from each other. And so it just makes it easier to separate them. when you have to pick one yarn or the other. And because, well, I designed this um, color work chart, so it doesn't actually have any um, areas where there is a repeat of more than, I think three stitches in one color so I don't have to catch any floats on the back. Because if you've got floats along the back where the colour you're not using um, isn't, is, is just held across, um, it can cause big loops that 
you know, because this is a sleeve, my thumb might get caught in it as I'm putting my hand into the sleeve. Um, and so you catch them. So once I've done this little cornery bit here. Okay, so then I'll go on to the second half of the stitches for this sleeve. So I turn around. I pull the stitches off that needle and push them onto this one. And then just retention my yarns. And then carry on. Um, so, oh, split that one. So let's say here I've got three white stitches. I'll try and move a little so you can see this properly. I've got three white stitches coming up, but let's say I had five and I didn't want to have the green um, carrying across all the back of those five stitches without it being caught because that would make too big a loop. So what I do is I'd knit, uh, so I do it after two stitches, so I'd knit my white stitch normally and then for the next white stitch, instead of going over the top of the green, as I have been, I would go underneath the green like that. And so it pulls the green over the top of the white. And then I'd slip that off. And then my next stitch, I would work over the top of the green as I have been before. And then that just catches Oh, it's all messy back there, so you can't really see. But that catches the green yarn. It sort of twists it around the white so that um, it's not just floating loose. Um, so I'm going to undo that because my floats are actually quite nice on this. I don't have any really long floats. Um, and so I'm quite happy to carry on doing them as I have been. It's funny because even though there's no one here, it still feels like I'm being watched. And do you find that your knitting gets a bit weird when people watch you, like you feel quite self-conscious and you start messing things up? <laughs> And there we go, so that's one sleeve. So then I'll pull those stitches just onto the cable there. I'll take my yarns off the thimble and then I'll slide the yarns for the next sleeve, slide the stitches, sorry, um, onto my needle and then wind those on as I did before and I'm ready to carry on. So working two at a time does require a bit more sort of faff and yarn management. Um, but I find it's a nice way to sort of do magic loop. But you've actually got something on the loop, so it feels a bit more constructive.
And there we go. That is one round of my colour work chart complete for the sleeves. You can see I've got my stitches all nice there. And it's just a really nice way to work. Um, so I hope that's been useful and informative for people. People with skinnier things. Well, I don't even know. Like, do they sell Norwegian thimbles? in smaller sizes. I imagine they must do because they can't assume that everyone has a certain size fingers. Um, I'm going to carry on using this one because I've made it and it works. Um, but I highly encourage anyone who does continental knitting who hasn't quite got the hang of, you know, using continental for one colour and English for another colour and using both hands or, you know, people who are picking up one colour and dropping the other, that's incredibly slow. Like, I I, I used to do it. Um, but once you get the hang of holding both yarns at once and using them simultaneously, it makes it so much faster and it's actually not that... It, it, it's not significantly more difficult or anything. It's just a question of getting used to it. And then it makes colour work a lot more fun to work. Um, and, you know, I love colour work, so... Anything that makes it more fun is well worth doing. And that's all for this episode. I really hope you've enjoyed watching. Uh, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do so, whether you've watched the previous episodes or whether this is your first one. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry and Facebook and Pinterest if you want to. I'm Marina Skewer everywhere. Um, and... For now, I will leave you with some nice autumnal scenes from a walk uh, I took near my aunt's house last weekend. And bye for now. Mm -hmm.